I was lucky enough to visit Amsterdam a couple of weeks ago and I had visions of sitting by the canal, sketching the amazing buildings, but in reality it was November, it was cold and wet, so the only sketching I did was through the window of a, a cafe while I was warming up. But even in 20 minutes you can still capture a little of the character of the place and I want to show you how to urban sketch even if time is not on your side. When speed is of the essence, it's worth thinking about the equipment you use. And I love these pens. They're stay below 88 pens for really quick sketching because you can do a line and then just by adding water with a water brush, you can make some of the ink move so you can develop tone the shadow and just give it a bit more oomph and volume just by adding water. If you want to then add colour, of course you can. You can get a lovely black and white sketch with just that amount of equipment, which in my book is a really good thing because you might be out and about just with a bag or stuff in your pocket. One tip I would give you is if you're using, say, a water resistant pen, and that I mean you can still see the line but some of the ink moves. You might want to get some of that ink moving without having any line. So if you scribble on something that's not absorbent, like a credit card, your palette, anything sort of plastic, you can then pick up that ink and paint with it as well. And the great thing is, once this is dry, that's going to be set. So you could put colour over the top without muddying those colours up if you want to. So the sort of sketchbook I like to take when I'm going away on a holiday is a concertina one like this because it tells the story of your whole week. If you want to see how to make one of those I've got a film and they're really easy. So I took this one, it's got a handy pocket for keeping tickets and whatnot and I've managed to do a few sketches in it. Uh, we were waiting on the boat for five minutes, then of course the boat went. Um, this is the mayor's house. That was done while we were having a um, pancake, looking out of the window on a very wet day. And uh, that was just another one of some more of the gorgeous buildings. And then sadly, no more. But the joy of these ones, as I say, will tell a story or if you want to do a small piece, you've got one page, you can do it across the fold and you can keep going. I'm going to work today in this little moleskin sketchbook. In the summer when I was away, I did a few sketches. So there's already stuff in there. This is a friend's garden when I got back. Oh, another visit away. My brother-in-law's car. Just while it away. My brother-in-law's car just while I was waiting for a bus to come in Henley near me. Oh, and at a wedding. So I've got a few little pictures and ideas already in this book. So it's, it's quite a nice little record of some of the things we've done this year. So I think having an Amsterdam picture would be rather lovely. I'm going to work across two pages and this is the, the picture that I took while we were having our particularly tasty pancake in, in Amsterdam on a really wet, miserable day. So when I'm working in this pen, I try to be brave and I'd encourage you to be brave. Don't use pencil. Time is of the essence. We're just going to go straight in. Because if we make any wrong marks, well, do you know what? we can sort of rub them out with the water or at least disguise them. And if we go in with pencil, the danger is that we just do more and more pencil, more and more rubbing out. And um, we just don't commit to our lines. Whereas if we go in with pen, what's the worst that can happen? Yeah, it's a wrong line, but who's to say the house wasn't particularly like that. We're trying to get the, the essence of the scene. So I would suggest, if at all possible, go straight in with, with a pen and see how you get on. Just be brave because 
well, you've got nothing to lose. You can always rip the page out if you hate it so much. Here, I'm just getting that first house in. And actually, I really wish, and I again, see, I did something wrong, but I can make it right. I want to get that the, the vans and the cars in. Because if there's one thing I have learnt, that if you are sketching, urban sketching, I think there is a secret code out there amongst van drivers, car drivers, especially HGV lines, uh, drivers, and they just have to come and park in front of you to obscure your view. It happens time and time again. <laughs> and you just have to, well, laugh really. So I'm going to get this car in. And again, you know, I know that no car like this has probably ever driven on the road, but it doesn't matter. I'm trying to get, say, the feel and the atmosphere of the place. For me, that's infinitely more important than whether it's 100% accurate and the person who owns that car would actually recognise it or the person who lives in this house would necessarily say, oh, that's my house. But what I do want is that people who are in Amsterdam would go, oh, that's Amsterdam, yeah, brilliant city. You know, or, oh yeah, I visited, oh, that's just how I remember it. Um, I just realised, because I'm talking, that I have slightly mucked up those windows. But again, maybe life is a little bit too short to count windows and to, to worry too much. Now you might be looking at this and thinking that is truly dreadful. Looks like a child's done it and I want let me just get these windows in here and then I'll show you the magic bit. So we've got some windows there, we've got a door behind here and then window there and window here. There's a lovely lamp post I'd like to put in but I won't do that just yet because I think I say I want to show you the exciting bit. So I grab my water brush and if you've not used water brushes you just add water to the bottom. If you can't open your water brush a lot of them seem to unscrew the wrong way and then you press the end and a little bit of water will flow out of the brush. So it's, it's a really convenient way of taking water with you uh, that hopefully won't leak. And can you see that by adding water, I'm starting to add tone and I can put darken some of these maybe down here I want to go in there got shadow under that van under the car and we can start to add a little bit of dimension to our work it's probably a good idea to not just sort of save all the water to the end. I mean, if something is about to move and go away, that is a good idea. But if you do a bit as you go along, then work a bit more. This can be drying while you're doing more. And so when you come back, you've got, you can start to add details on top. This is wet, so I'm not going to put that lovely lamp post in just at the moment but I'm going to come and work on this sort of red house here. Another of my particularly poor cars. <laughs> I'm trying to do this in 20 minutes, 25 minutes, in that sort of coffee time, realistically, before the, the, the waiter's starting to think that you should be ordering something else and starting to um, humphit you in the background. You know, this is not a particularly um, detailed or you know fine art finish sketch. It's a bit of fun to capture 
the, the surroundings. And it's amazing, the more you look at something, the more you actually see. So looking at these windows that I'm doing now, they've obviously got little awnings that maybe in the summer they, they pull out over those windows. So that's quite fun to put in. They've got low bits there. Um, let's just look here and here, that's slightly lower. If we got that wrong, it wouldn't matter because I think very few people come back and say, oh, I think you'll find. But on that row of houses, they don't all line up or, or whatever. We're trying to get the essence and the character of these buildings just as we try and get the, the essence and the character of, I don't know, animals or people or, or whatever. Buildings definitely have character. So we can do that. These windows are a little longer. And here, got three along. these oh, there's an awning above here uh yeah there are awnings above there there these are sort of got um divided there's an awning there so it's got a low window I'm just going to be aware of how that's drying. So let's come back to this because it has dried. And now I could maybe add some more detail. I can emphasise things I like. Oh, but there's a little dormer window there. Sort of sticking out. I do so love that shape there. Now we've got the surrounds. That is face on to us. They just about every house in Amsterdam has 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 a hoist because they're so thin and narrow inside. They they hoist large pieces of furniture up, and I guess they take out the windows when they're moving, so that they can get pieces in. So all the houses, even new ones, seem to have these these hoists outside. So we can start to put in the frame and I can see they've got, I think this must be a sort of protection bar at the bottom here. Again, they've got the white frame. And we're starting to build up some detail. want to go darker in these. There's some sort of cornicing or something on there. Some work around the, the door. And there's more lines through there. really see a lot of frame on these lower windows but I'll put some in. Oh, I've got a bit of guttering here, I do love a bit of guttering, I do love um, electricity lines and guttering and all those sorts of things because they just look such fun on a building. So there's some sort of round thing up there. Now this is still damp this side and sometimes you'll find the pen will not work on a damp surface, certainly not on a wet surface, but um, I think we'll get away with it because it's a little bit damp. Just breaking up those lines to give an idea of some of those tiles. Might just emphasize that little Velux window there. I can see that there's some sort of decoration along the top there. Ooh, there's a little window I missed. These have got window sills. We can put those in. We've got centres. This has got 
big awning over two windows. It's quite fun. Let's just put some of that in. It's actually a wider window. If I wanted to make it wider, well, why don't I? We can do that. Again, that's got windowsill, whereas these actually come down lower. There's some sort of balcony by the looks of things. So let's put in a bit of balcony there. And so these will be darker underneath because that balcony is blocking the light there and then we've got two windows here so this little house is starting to develop do you remember what I said at the beginning about maybe picking up some extra ink if you want to be sort of darker in places without more lines so doing these windows would be the prime sort of place for doing something like that. Under that balcony would be another place where I want to go dark. Let's go under here. And we can start to develop that. So you can go darker in layers if you want. You won't be able to go black and just really dark unless you sort of scribble or hatch which you're, you're welcome to but I think this is quite a fun way of working so let's not get too caught up on that house and we'll come over here now there's something going on along there I think that's another of those hoists hard to see there's something poking up there now this is an interesting shape building so it seems to be a little bit forward of the other one. Is that right? I'm not sure. We've got some cornicing and, and so forth here. Some sort of little bosses there. And then in the middle, what have we got? chimney up here and then some sort of round thing yeah that sort of seems to go round there definitely want to get this pointy one in because that's just such a brilliant shape so I am going to get that oops that's about now I've made a bit of a mess of that line but does that matter no because when I add the water it's going to be okay and will disguise that I haven't done that terribly well So this looks more like a warehouse that's been converted into flats or something and less like an original house. I don't know if that's true. Door here. Mm -hmm. And so how do these go? Also got this lovely tree which I'm rather enjoying that I want to get in so I can put these tree branches here might be sensible to get more of the background done and then put the tree in sort of darker pen work in front um, so actually let's get 
yet another van here. It might be fun to actually get some of the edge of the canal because after all it is Holland, it is Amsterdam so there's bits and pieces going on there let's just come in here look at how these are row of three then we have hmm, long thin one it's interesting that almost looks like a door there wonder if they used to have steps up to it and now they've got steps on the ground floor don't know the thing is as you look because there are steps or something coming up there as you look at something you see more and more all the stuff that you just wouldn't have seen when you first look this van's got some sort of roof rack on. Let's give it a roof rack. Got lights, obviously. This tree is actually in some sort of brick container. So let's darken down these windows. get some shadow under there they don't have to all be dark so we can have a bit of glint on them this is a big dark area behind this white car which is quite good because it sort of contrasts now I definitely want that to go dark there we want some of this here our dark windows because we said we wanted to make sure that we do this behind our tree before we do the tree in more detail should have done this line higher up but you know it's it's not going to be a problem So if at this point, say, the waiter is tapping his fingers and wanting you to go, you actually will have captured a lot of information and you could always finish it off while you're back in your hotel. But if you've got a little bit more time, another few minutes, you could just keep adding and keeping looking for layers of detail so start with those big shapes and then start adding little bits of detail as you get the opportunity and should be dry now so i could come back and get that lovely lamp post at its very wonky angle um looks like one of the cars has hit it probably not can't see a lot of it but let's just get that lamp post in there. There's a light here. It's always quite fun to get extra levels of detail. Can't really see anything going on around these windows. There is a bit, so I could emphasise some of those. Wish I'd made that chimney a bit taller. Never mind. There's another tree here. I don't think I'm going to put that in. I'm just going to concentrate on this tree. If you want something to be really dark, you're going to have to say hatch. So I do want this one to be quite dark just to show up my little lamp post. So if I hatch it and then go over it, I'll get a nice really dark window. I could do that in a few other places. And I hope that looks like the light is glinting on windows. 
because windows are like the eyes of buildings, aren't they? They sort of twinkle and wink at you. I need to have a little bit more detail over this side, don't I? I'm sort of, maybe if I put in some of those there. frames now this is winter so we're not going to have many leaves on these trees I'm elongating this tree it isn't this tall but I think that actually having it breaking through the roof line is going to be better for my sketch and you know I do want the sketch to actually look presentable rather than just going for I say accuracy so if you need to move uh, a car or you need to move a lamppost or make a tree bigger or put it in a place that looks better for your composition then do it some sort of support for that uh, i don't think it's a balcony but there's something going on there quite nice just to have a few little ideas there's a tree or something here which might be quite handy so I'm just going to do a scribbly old bush of a tree here that's quite fun might just put a little bit of water on there again want to put a few more reflections just to make this feel watery so give or take ooh, apart from that um that could be our little sketch our coffee is drunk it's time to go on to the the next museum or whatever we're doing and we've got a lovely memory of sitting in that cafe looking out over the over the canal and and enjoying a very typical dutch scene if we've got more time, of course, we can finesse this, go back in, put in a few more details and crisp things up. You have to obviously ask yourself, does it feel more like the scene that I witnessed by adding those details or am I just taking away? So if it's not really adding much to it, then, then probably it is the time to stop. If on the other hand you think, oh no, you know, for me, the, the details of windows and things like that, that's what Amsterdam's all about, well then you can put them in. One final thing I probably should do is at least put one bicycle in. We just laugh so much because Amsterdam, <laughs> you know, it's a cliche, but it was just so full of bicycles. It was fantastic. We didn't get hit once, which was, of course, rather gratifying. Uh, what you could do, if you have got any colours with you, is maybe add a spot of colour. The Dutch flag is red, white and blue, and that seems a pretty obvious colour palette to go for. But the good thing is when you're um, traveling, you do not have to be, well, not even when you're traveling, I was just gonna say you don't have to be literal, but when you're away, you may only have a couple of colors with you and you might not have the right one and all that sort of stuff. Well, actually that's brilliant. Improvising is no bad thing. I might want to add, I don't know, just a little bit of colour. I'm going to bring some red just over there to, to sort of just tie things across. If you need to rinse your water brush it's always a good idea to have a bit of kitchen towel otherwise you will end up just <laughs> doing it on your 
leg of your jeans or whatever not a not an issue but you might not wish to do that um what shall this house i think so we'll put some blue and just let those colors go for a wonder and i'd like a blue van i think and i might make this car blue just to bring my eye over to this side i am going to just bring a little bit of that color in over here no more than that one thing i am going to do just put a bit of green on that tree if you are a splattery person you might want to add a few little dots put them there because this was a really wet day and that gives maybe the feeling of some of that rain maybe a little bit of those few leftover um, leaves on my tree yeah that that's entirely optional um you know how far you want to go with the color is really up to you i'm going to bring some of that red down into the water not because the canals were red but just because i think that actually slightly frames frames the piece and makes it more complete you know that's a matter of judgment and your judgment you know so entirely what you want to do this is not a watercolor sketchbook so it will only take so much water so i have to be careful with that i'll stop so there you go my very speedy sketch remembering what it was like to be in Amsterdam you can do it too you only need a sketchbook a pen and a water brush potentially a few little paints that is optional you could always do that when you got home or just leave it black and white